Thank you for the invitation. And the text is on your forehead. <laughs> I'll stand here. Uh, examples of uh, adventure comics, of European adventure comics. The first one is uh, Tantan, probably the first adventurer in European uh, comics. And the second one, uh, a little bit less uh, known, at least for people in Israel for sure, uh, I think that in Europe it's, he's a little bit more known. It's Corto Maltese, or Corto Maltese, which is a creation of uh, Ugo Pratt, the uh, Italian-born uh, uh, caricaturist. Sorry? No, no, you are South American. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I am South American, because uh, uh, that's <laughs> like Ugo Pratt lived in Argentina for 16 years, and he uh, wrote it in, w when in Argentina he wrote it like that. Uh, okay, uh, I want to begin by uh, saying that uh, the idea, the representation of the other in Europe was uh, in a way uh, constituted by colonialism. Uh, the co colonial projects seek to le legitimize and institutionalize the relations of exploitation through the construction of racial hierarchies of difference that both justified and perpetuated the colonial agenda by building a racist hierarchy then it was justified the fact that Europeans were in Africa or in Asia uh, expoiling and uh, in a way bringing in that in their point of view bringing civilization to the natives practices of exclusion were at the core of the different colonialist projects, as the very possibility of inclusion would threaten the unhindered plundering and exploitation at the root of colonial rule. The legitimation of the colonial institutional system and of colonial profits was as constant the belief that colonizers and colonized were distinguished by reducible differences. Among the symbols cited as proof of the dissimilarities between colonizer and colonized, race was chosen as the most obvious. Thus, racism became an inherent characteristic of colonialism, a system grounded in the systemic rankings of peoples, both in its institutional dimension and as the differential constitution of identity, racism fixed the different expressions of the relationship between colonizer and colonized as a rigid hierarchy of difference that established and perpetuated economic, cultural, and social inequalities. Difference was posited as eternal, beginning in the past and extending into the future. Race and nation consider integral parts of destiny, both for the individual and for the collective. A notion exemplified by the following quote from Ernest Renan, the 19th century French historian and theoretician of the concept of nation. And I quote, the regeneration of the inferior or degenerate, ra degenerate races by the superior races is part of the providential order of things for humanity. Yes. It's very Sorry. To Sorry. Okay. As an interpreter, I would have stopped you from the book. <laughs> okay. I agree. Okay. The regeneration of the inferior or degenerated races by the superior ones is part of the providential order of things for humanity. With us, the common man is nearly always a declasse nobleman. His heavy hand is better suited to handling the sword than the menial tool. Nature has made a race of workers, the Chinese race, who have wonderful manual dexterity and almost no sense of honor. Govern them with justice, leaving from them, in return for the blessing of such a government, an ample allowance for the conquering race, and they will be satisfied. A race of tillers of the soils, the Negro. Treat him with kindness and humanity, and all will be as it should. A race of masters and soldiers, the European race. That was Ernest Renan by the end of the 19th century. This racialization of the relationship between different groups is part of European culture. It's related also to the experience of the Holocaust, because the racialization was external, but also internal. Uh, now I want to, th this is in a way is the, 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 the context in which Europe uh, conceptualizes or conceptualized in the past, maybe also in the present, the other. 
uh, the adventure genre was important in this sense because it was very popular, especially in the from the mid 19th century onwards. When mass literacy grew, adventure became a popular popular subgenre of fiction. Although not exploited to its fullest, adventure has seen many changes over the years, from being constrained to stories of knights in armor and armor to stories of high-tech espionage. Examples of the period of the high period of, of the adventure genre, uh, uh, writers like Sir Walter Scott, Alexandre Dumas, uh, the father, Jules Bern for sure, Reader Haggard, Emilio Salgari, most of them, like for example, Reader Haggard and <coughs> Bern, uh, assimilated this uh, racialized version of the other. There were some more critical uh, writers, Emilio Salgari, in a way, was more critical of European imperialism. The same could be said in certain ways of Jack London. But mainly, this genre, we, which, was, which responded to the ideal of the Enlightenment and modernity, the centrality of the subject, the possibility of acting over history and changing, the idea that adventure requires cunning, ruthlessness, endurance leadership, in, a, in the same way that early capitalism, the idea that the end will be always positive, the importance of knowledge and of science and technology, for example, in Jules Verne, and uh, for uh, Ernst Bloch, uh, the, uh, the philosopher and writer, wrote, for example, that adventure breath optimism, the power of the individual body over life, and for sure, a gendered celebration of manliness. Uh, the, two, uh, the two adventurous uh, uh, comics that, we, uh, will, that I will talk about them are, belong to the type of the wanderer. The wanderer is <coughs> a man, for sure a man, who makes his way across vast distances, encounters danger and difficult from hostile native beasts or savage, fights grueling and perilous conditions, and returns home with great fortune and honor. Tintin and Corto Maltese are that kind of wanderers. Even Corto Maltese does not return home, uh, only maybe for dying. Even his death, it's not clear whether he died in 1936 in the uh, Spanish Civil War or if he uh, is still living. Uh, this is Tintin for sure. And this is Corto Maltese. Uh, Tantan was created by Hergé. And Hergé, in many ways, is an example of this European, in his personal life, is an example of this European approach. So Georges Remy was uh, born in uh, Belgium. He was uh, educated in a, Catho in a Catholic school. He was a member of the scouts that in those days in Europe was very, very uh, 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 influenced by colonialism and by colonialist uh, values. His uh, first draws he made in Le Petit Vantiem, which was the weekly children supplement of Le Vantiem Cycle. The editor of Le Vantiem Cycle was a, 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 a religious, a, a, a religious person, a, a religious figure, Norbert Wallace, who was a vocal fascist, who kept a signed photograph of Benito Mussolini on his desk. Uh, the paper, uh, the uh, Van Tiemsiek, carried strong Catholic and fascist messages, many of its passages expli explicitly anti-Semitic. Tintin and Milou were born as part of this kind of ideological message. The first at Tintin's, Tantan's first adventure was in the, uh, in the uh, Tantan in uh, the Soviet, in the uh, Opai of Soviet. It was an indictment of communism. The second adventure, RJ wanted to send Tantan to uh, states, but uh, the editor forced him to write one of the, uh, of the comics uh, on which I will talk, Tintin of Congo. Tintin goes to Congo, which was a, a, a Belgium colony in those days. Uh, after, uh, when, during the war, 
uh, his the vingtième <coughs> the vingtième siècle was closed and uh, Energie continued to publish in a collaborator paper. And he was even accused of collaboration by the end of the war. In a way, he was redeemed by a Belgium resistant who uh, created the Tantan edition, Edition Tantan, and invited Hergé to write on the, in, those, in his uh, edition. And in, in, in a way, Hergé was uh, though some of his friends and former collaborators were indicted of collaboration, he, in a way, was uh, re, uh, reabsorbed into the Belgian uh, society, uh, even though he had to rewrite some of his texts. For example, uh, one of them, The Shooting Star, which uh, was written during the war and uh, represented the, 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 the bad man was a, a Jewish named uh, Blumstein, and he then modified his name when the, black, uh, when the shooting star appeared after the war in order to make him less, uh, less Jewish, though the, uh, the, the drawing was cl a clear uh, uh, utilization of anti-Semitic uh, stereotypes. But even one of his last uh, texts, which is <coughs> Flight 714 to Sydney still has some anti-Semitic stereotypes, even less salient. Uh, Corto Maltese, sorry, Corto Maltese, in a way, it's the kind of opposite of uh, Tantan. He was created for sure many years after, but the biography of Corto Maltese is a kind of a uh, combination of all the European others. Colto Martese was the daughter of, was the son of a Roma woman, and he was educated, at least as the story goes, he was educated in a Jewish rabbinical school in Cordoba, the uh, pupil of a, a rabbi called Ezra Toledano, and his uh, traveling around the world is always, in a way, identifying with the other. This also, uh, in that sense, uh, Hugo Pratt's own biography uh, has some points in common with uh, Hergé. Uh, uh, Pratt, even though he was 20 years younger than Hergé, he was the son, the grandson of a fascist, uh, the, of the, the guy who created, who organized the first fascist group in uh, Venezia. But this person, his, his grandfather from his mother's side, was also the son of a, a converted Jewish family, the Toledano. This rabbi who was Corto Maltese's uh, teacher was, in the, was a, a homage that uh, Pratt paid to his Jewish ancestors. Corto Maltese was part also of the colonial uh, the colonial adventure, if you can call it like that, uh, Italian colonial adventure. His father was a, 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 a bureaucrat of, the, of fascism in Ethiopia, and Hugo Pratt was forced by his father to be part of the colonial police when he was 14. Then when the British uh, conquered Ethiopia, he was repatriated to Italy. In Italy, he was uh, put in jail by the SS. He uh, <coughs> managed to escape. He joined the British and he entered Venezia with the British uh, troops. Uh, then he went, he traveled he, to Argentina for 15 years and in 67, when he went back to Italy, he created Corto Maltese. I want to briefly uh, uh, deal with two different creations, one of, uh, two of Hergé, two of uh, Corto Maltese that while they did not were in any kind of direct contact, in a way, those creations talk one with the other. The first one is a Tintino Congo, the travel, the second, Tintin's second adventure. And these are some of the comments. White master, you come quick, you come uh, quick, lion get him mad, little white him getting too much big, boss here, soon push me out, 
meat of Juju man must make him disappear. An I which doctor of Baba Orum, I keep the ignorant and stupid people in my power. This is the Congolese when sp hearing for the first time the voice of, the, uh, of their uh, witch man, thinking that the, that the witch man is within the gramophone. Enough, enough, you good white man, you chief of Baba Orum, you boss man. I've scarcely started going round my village and I found them fighting here like anywhere else. Make peace with the Babaoro or beware my wrath, you great Juju man, you are all powerful, great Mumganga, we make you chief of Mahatabu. Those are the leopard man, and this is interesting because also in Corto Maltese, the, the leopard man, which were kind of uh, African uh, opposition sect, appear here, they appear in a ridiculous vein. And the last one, my dear friends, today I'm going to talk to you about your country, Belgium. This is a class that uh, Tentan gives at the mission school in uh, Congo. Uh, incidentally, in later versions, this was replaced by a, a mathematics class because it was clearly too much, even, when, uh, even for RJ. Uh, this is the way in which <coughs> In which, uh, uh, in which Hergé portrayed the, the Africans and here, just a minute, no, this one. Okay, here is the way in which, and this is the Leopard Man, he's not a ridiculous figure, he's a kind of vigilante, a kind of a guy who uh, deals with justice. So this is, th there is a much more respectful uh, attitude in, uh, in Prat's uh, depiction of, Fran of uh, Africa, but still there is a kind of uh, otherness in that Africa is uh, depicted as a kind of mysterious place when speaking about the leopard man uh, he says maybe they have good motives to do what they do attacking the british in nigeria in nigeria congo and angola but i don't know nothing about that says corto maltes i only know that africa is a mysterious continent so his approach is more understanding to opposition to colonialism, he's more understanding to the motives the Africans uh, may have, but still there is a kind of otherness to Africa that makes it, uh, in, that, that makes that a European can't really understand what Africa is about. But this is not only uh, their approach to Africa, this is also mainly Herge's approach to South America. And if we can claim about uh, Tintin in Congo that it was written in the, <coughs> in the 30s, Tintin and the Picaros is the last, Tintin's last adventure, and it was written in 1975. And it happens in South America, and here Tintin and Haddock travel to South America in order to save uh, Bianca Castafiore, their friend, and once again, there are, uh, even though there is some kind of criticism to, uh, to corporations dealing with South America, South Americans are represented as stupid, as drunkards, the uh, guerrilleros, the, the, the guerrilla people who are supposedly, at least Michael Farr uh, does write in his book on Tantan, are uh, based on Castro and his people. They are a bunch of drunkards that they depend on Tantan and Tornasol, on the European, in order to uh, make them uh, freedom fighters. Uh, the idea is in South America nothing changed because the end is like the beginning. Tantan's friend Alcázar replaces the other dictator, but he himself is a dictator. 
and the last vignette, the last uh, drawing shows the same situation, poverty and the total indifference of the government. So in South America, in fact, history doesn't take place, only through the Europeans. And Tantan said, and uh, Haddock said, we don't care about what happens here in South America. We only want to rescue our friends. So the only thing that matters for Europeans are what happens with uh, Europeans. Uh, and this is in 1975, so if in the 30s you could claim that there is a kind of colonialist zeitgeist that in a way framed the way in which Hergé understood Africa, in 1975 it is more difficult to claim that it was the time zeitgeist. It was probably Hergé's way of still living the influence of uh, European colonialism and, his, uh, and the European approach or some of Europe's approach to the other. Uh, in that sense, Corto Maltese is completely different. In an adventure happening in Brazil, Corto Maltese helps Tiro Fijo. Tiro Fijo is a cangaceiro. A cangaceiro where Cangaceros were groups of uh, rebels in, uh, in northern Brazil fighting against the landowners. And uh, Tiro Fijo, uh, and here, the, the, if in the Herges depiction, the Europeans are the one for whom values like friendship are important, and for South American values are not important at all, it's kind of cynical exploitation of their peoples, in, the, uh, in Corto Maltese's, uh, or in Pratt's view, things change. Corto Maltese is a cynicist. He, makes what he, he does what he does because he is paid for. And Tiro Fijo, the Brazilian rebel leader who, as he defines himself, he's only a bandit, he's the one who gives his life for the things in which he uh, believes. And even though Tiro Fijo eventually dies, his heritage or his fighting goes down to a kid who identifies with him. This kid is called Corisco de Sao Jorge, who is a true, uh, this is just a minute. It's a kid, it's this kid in the left who takes Tiro Fijo's hat and continues his, uh, his uh, struggle. And there is a, a, a significant difference in the end of two, both stories. In Herges, uh, end, things are the same, only replaced by the name of the dictator and the kind of uniforms the police wears. In a Pratt's story, the end is Corto Maltese saying, probably also this little boy will be defeated, but eventually they will continue struggle and eventually they will win. So there is the possibility of modifying history. History belongs also to the other. The others are also part of history, are not excluded of history. So in, in a way, if Tantan was the first European adventurer, it could be claimed that Corto Maltese is the last European adventurer because afterwards the adventure genre was superseded mostly by science fiction and the fantasy genre. Advent the adventure genre, both in writing and in comics, is much less uh, significant than it was in the 60s and the 70s. So there this is a kind of dialogue between the first European adventurer and the last European adventurer. How a, a genre which was born in a way with colonialism and represented and reproduced the colonialist approach to the other transforms itself, at least within comics, from the way in which Hergé understands the other and the way in which Pratt understands the other, even though this has also limits. Maybe because of Pratt's own experience in South America, the South American other is much more like us than the African one. 
the African other, even though it's understood, even though he struggle, it, there is a kind even of ident identification with the African struggle, but still represents a, a kind of mystery that Europeans can really uh, um, understand. So there is, a, even in Hugo Pratt, there is a kind of limit that in which the other remains an, a, a completely alien person, but still it's a great way since Hergé and Tantan first uh, built or constituted the way in which European children through adventure comics understood the other. Thank you very much.